Alright, so we have the Amscope from Amzer. We're going to do a quick demo of the product. Let's just show how easy it is to use and set up. So, just a quick um, overview of the, of the unit. So we have two inputs for the two uh, receivers that are inside. And these are the outputs from the internal Lizen. So they're basically just looping out in, into the front. And the benefit of having these uh, external is that you can connect to the um, receiver inputs and do other tests, such as with a current probe or sniffer probes and stuff like that. Um, that's your power connection. Your ground stud will go to a, a ground. On the back here, we'll show a little bit. The, uh, the back side here, we have our um, power for the receivers, power for your EUT, DUT, and this is the control fiber. So control fiber is fiber optic, goes to a, an adapter, which is either USB or Ethernet. So we have ours hooked up with a USB unit. Um, there's some calibration ports for testing, um, checking out the system, but you wouldn't have to worry about those too much. For the demo, we have a nice little setup here that helps um, demonstrate the usefulness of the unit um, pretty quick and easy. Um, we have our, our fake DUT, which is a power supply we bought off of um, Amazon. Oh, straight off of Amazon, no changes to it. <laughs> and then we have a filter box. This filter box allows us to do some checks and see basically quick fixes um, to uh, fix our fake DUT here. Um, you have different switches here. You can go to the start here. So this is a straight pass through measurement. Um, so if we look here, there's a, there's a so position zero is off. Right now I'm on position one, which is direct. There's no filtering. Position two is a full filter. Position three is um, CMC uh, choke. And position four is a capacitor that goes between the two lines. All right, so we start up the, the software. The software runs in a web browser. Um, so we just type in the uh, address to the, the box. Um, the demo unit, we have it just listed with um, the, the address right here. So we just type that in, and then it comes up. Now, we have different settings here, that, um, how your unit might look. But once it's running, it automatically starts out running. So it's actually measuring already. We can change how the device looks. Um, there's a dark setting, which makes the, the, the screen dark. Some people like this. I like the bright setting myself. We, um, you can have menu, click, hover. Um, you can change the coloring of the, the screen, the sweeps and such. Um, and once you do all these changes in your browser and your computer, they stay. All right. And then you, you can um, actually save these um, settings and recall them, if, especially if you have multiple people running this uh, on the same computer and they want their own presets. Uh, frequency sweep on the tab here, you have the ability to change what band we're looking at and what um, resolution bandwidth. Again, it's all set up for EMC testing, so it has the bandwidth required for that, those these tests. We can uh, also manually do that if we want to zoom in, zoom out. Um, we can also do that as well. Amplitude, you can change the amplitude. This is kind of the standard amplitude that's set up here. Um, if you wanted to you know, move this up in the more in the center, you can, you can change that um, by changing these settings here. Um, the attenuation is on automatic. If you had an e, a, a EUT that had a high output that was you know, clicking in and out, um, it, it might be beneficial to set this um, output attenuator up higher so that um, can re doesn't uh, overload the front end. You know, if you have external attenuation or factors, you can add those here, transfer impedances for different um, products and such. 
trace configuration. This is the one that probably will use the most. So the trace configuration is what we're going to do here pretty um, right now and show the very quick usefulness of the product. So right now we are measuring three traces. I had this set up before. Um, and let's it's, it's, it's redo these actually and make sure you can see it happen here. So we have one tab. It's got to stay there. I got an error. So I can't get rid of that one. But here we have, we have right clear. So it's writing each sweep every one second it updates you can do a max hold min hold freeze so freeze just holds there it doesn't scan anymore read write that's what we normally have so we're doing emi measurements on line ground so right now we're at peak and that's listed at, at the top of the tab we have line to ground peak and it's on right clear if we want to add another one we can do line to ground and we'll make quasi peak I'm going to do another trace, line of ground, average. So now we're showing line of ground on all three traces, and it's updating every second for the full range. And as you see, we're, we're failing. We can also add neutral to ground. That's just a, oh, actually, it's add a new tab first. That's more, go add a new tab. We'll go neutral to ground. And we'll do quasi peak and so that color is very light blue and that went right right on top of the uh, green so you can see it's basically exactly the same um i'm just going to get rid of that we'll just have the three traces since both lines are, are performing the same um limit lines um this probably might not if you're starting from the first time you might not have these on so that basically you have to select a limit line from the drop down we're on CISPR 32 class B, which is a household items. And we just hit on, and then there, there we have them. We can save and edit them or um, add new ones if you need to. We'll go back to trace configuration again. And so we're seeing here, we're failing, right? So if you got, these are the exact measurements that we're, uh, the lab would do, um, EMI lab. And so we're failing this uh, off-the-shelf DUT right out of the box fails and now so how is it failing why is it failing so the best way to do that is to see if it's failing common mode or differential mode so we'll turn off one of these traces we don't need both of them and we're going to switch to modal measurement so we'll put the first tab we'll click modal measure first the first tab and then common mode quasi peak and then this next tab we'll do differential mode quasi peak so now you can see here the dark pink here is a common mode measurement and that one is still failing whereas the differential mode which is the green is not failing so we can see that this this unit is actually failing common mode now if this was your dut then you would have a direction in order to fix this out of tolerance levels and basically uh, you know a simple fix for that is a common mode choke so what we can do is change our filter box and turn on the common mode choke so what we'll do is go to position three position three on both sides there switch it into common mode choke and instantly we see the common mode is not passing now we'll go to position four, which is um, just a differential uh, capacitor. And then once it settles out there, now we see the column mode failure comes back, differential still passes. Now if we go to the full filter, which is position two, all right, the position two on both of them, of course we pass it as well. But you, you have a capacitor in there that's not needed, so you're, you have a more expensive filter. Now, the benefit of this too is that since you have um, this test, you would have this test item, you can do iterations to fix your unit um, to find a column mode choke that costs less and still allowed you to pass and instead of you know using the, the biggest filter that you have available. So it, it, you can do a lot of cost savings and analysis um, very easily, very quickly without knowing much about EMC. Thank you. Bye.